सर्वाइकल इनसेफिशियंसी और सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस वट डू यू मीन बाय सर्वाइकल इनसेफिशियंसी और सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस सर्वाइकल इनकम्सेंसी और सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस मीन देर इज स्पॉन्टेनियस डायलिटेशन ऑफ द सर्विक्स सो नॉर्मली द इंटरनल ऑस इज क्लोज दिस ओवर हियर इज द यूट्रस दिस इज सर्विक्स एंड दिस इज इंटरनल ऑस बट इन पेशेंट्स विद सर्वाइकल इनसेफिशियंसी ऑटोमेटिकली द इंटरनल ऑस डायलेट्स एंड दैट लीड्स टू सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन राइट नाउ in case of cervical incompetence or cervical uh, insufficiency you will always get history of painless recurrent second trimester abortions always the painless uh, abortions are going to be painless so now a diagnosis of cervical incompetence can be made either based on history or you can make a diagnosis based on ultrasound if your patient is giving you history of two or more than two abortions of second trimester which are painless then that confirms that it is a case of cervical insufficiency in history based diagnosis i don't have to do any further investigations to confirm that it is cervical insufficiency if a patient is telling me two or more than two second trimester painless abortions i am going to take it that she is a case of cervical insufficiency but suppose if the patient is telling me that there is history of only one second trimester painless abortion in that case i will have to do a tvs and on tvs if length of the cervix is less than equal to 2.5 cm then i'm going to call it as cervical insufficiency or cervical incompetence so if there is history of once second trimester abortion you have to do the length of the cervix to know whether the length is less than 2.5 or not if it is less than 2.5 then definitely you are dealing with recurrent abortions right so the investigation of choice for cervical incompetence or cervical insufficiency is tvs on tvs the length of the cervix will become less than equal to 2.5 cm please remember in a normal pregnant female length of the cervix is 4 cm and what will happen to the shape of the cervix the shape of the cervix will become u shaped please a very very important question is that as the cervix dilates what happens to the shape of the cervix so this over here suppose is the lower uterine segment my hand is the lower uterine segment and this over here is the cervix so normally on ultrasound the cervix appears t shaped now as the cervix is going to dilate from t shaped it is going to become y shaped then it is going to become v shaped and then it is going to dilate and cervix will ultimately become a part of lower uterine segment that is what is called as taking up of cervix and now the cervix shape becomes u shaped so initially it is t shaped then it becomes y shaped then it becomes v shaped and then the cervix becomes a part of the lower uterine segment and the shape of the cervix becomes u shaped so this is how the shape of the cervix changes from t to y to v to you and that is again a very very important question for neat pg bachas right now so shape of the cervix for cervical insufficiency it has to be u shaped how do you manage cervical insufficiency there are two options which we have number one option which we have is progesterone and number two option is cervical cerclage right so now coming to important next step if your question says that there is a pregnant female who has previous history of two second trimester abortions if your question says previous two second trimester trimester abortions please understand there is no need for ultrasound in this case i am going to say that i am going to apply i am going to do cervical cerclage i will be doing cervical cerclage and whenever we do cervical cerclage we have to give progesterone now suppose there is a pregnant female who has history of one second trimester abortion whenever there is history of one second trimester abortion next step is you should me measure the length of cervix if length of cervix is less than equal to 2.5 that means it is cervical incompetence if it is cervical incompetence you are what are you do, giving her you will be give doing cervical cerclage plus you are going to give progesterone now if length of the cervix is more than 2.5 but please understand there is history of second trimester abortion so in this case i am not going to do cerclage because for doing cerclage there should be either history of two second trimester abortion or history of one second trimester abortion with length of the cervix less than 2.5 so in this case i will give only progesterone 
right? Why am I giving only progesterone? Because actually there is history of one second trimester abortion, right? Now suppose there is a pregnant female with no history of abortion, but her cervical length is less than 2.5. Please understand if there is no history of abortion that does not justify cervical cerclage. Cervical cerclage can be done only if there are two histories of second trimester abortion. I don't need to check the length. And then if there is one history of one second trimester abortion, then I need to check the length. If length is less than 2.5, go for cervical cerclage. But in this condition, neither is uh, this patient does not have any history of abortion. Right, but her length is less than 2.5. I'm going to take it as a coincidental finding. We are not going to do any surgery. The only thing what I have to do for her is give her progesterone. Clear to all of you? Right. Now, cervical cerclage, please remember it can be done in pregnant as well as in non pregnant females. In pregnant females, you can do it transvaginally or you can do it transabdominally. In transvaginal cerclage, the most commonly done cerclage is McDonald's cerclage. Please remember in cerclages, what in, uh, uh, suture is used, right? You are using a non absorbable suture, monofilament non absorbable suture. Now, in case of McDonald's cerclage, you are going to apply purse string sutures. So, this is McDonald cerclage. This is done vaginally, right? And in this case, you are applying purse string sutures. Where do you apply these purse string sutures? They are you are applying it on Porsche. You are applying it on portio vaginalis. That means the part of the cervix which is inside the vagina. Vaginally, I cannot reach exactly up to the level of internal loss. As close I can go, I go. And that is why the sutures are applied on portio vaginalis. Clear to all of you? Then, then there can be Schrodinger circlage and there can be Worms circlage. Worms circlage is used as an emergency circlage. What do you mean by that? That means that the patient is already dilated. Patient is already dilated and she has come to you for a circlage. In that case, you will explain to her the prognosis, the poor prognosis. You are going to do a circlage and the circlage which you are going to do, it is going to be Two stitches anterior posterior like this. This is what is called as worms circlage, right? And this is used as an emergency circlage. Then you can go for transabdominal circlage. Transabdominal circlage, it is called as Benson and Durfee circlage. It can be done laparoscopically also and it can be done in pregnant female as well as in non-pregnant females. Indications for doing abdominal circlage is failed transvaginal circlage. And uh, what is the drawback of abdominal circlage? Number one, definitely it's an abdominal surgery. Number two, the sutures are, you know, whenever you have to remove the sutures in abdominal circlage, again, you will have to remove them per abdominally. That is why the sutures in case of transabdominal circlage, they are removed after the family is completed. And such patients with circlage in place, abdominal circlage in place, when they conceive, then we are going to take them up for cesarean section clear to all of you. So, in abdominal circlage, you do not remove the suture till the family is complete and every time a patient conceives, you have to go for a cesarean section. Now, in non-pregnant females, vaginally, I can do the lash and lash procedure. In lash and lash procedure, we are going to remove a part of the uh, defective cervix and stitch the cervix. Then, uh, you know, you are removing the part of the cervix and then you are applying sutures. So, I am removing the part of the cervix and we will be applying sutures. Now, this is going to make the uh, cervix very fragile and that is why we tell patients that there has to be gap of three months before they conceive and fetus again should be delivered by cesarean section because over here you've cut a part of the cervix. Please understand lash and lash procedure, it has many complications, it is not done these days. These days in non-pregnant female, I have to do only laparoscopic circlage. Clear to all of you, lash and lash was a procedure where defective cervix was removed but because you are cutting a part of the cervix, that is why after doing uh, lash and lash uh, surgery, you never go for vaginal delivery, you go for cesarean section. Clear to all of you? Yes? Okay. Then, what are 
the important concepts, some of the important concepts which you need to know regarding surclage. As I told you, most commonly done surclage is McDonald surclage. And what kind of suture are you using? You are using a monofilament, non-absorbable suture. You are going to apply per string like sutures. These sutures have to be applied on Portio vaginalis. Time for doing the surclage is 14 to 16 weeks, you know earliest you can do it by 12 weeks and maximum maximum you can do it by 24 weeks maximum it can be done by 24 weeks what are the contraindications for applying surclage so if the membranes are ruptured there is chorioamnionitis if there is bleeding if there are uterine contractions uterine contractions means that the process of labor has started please understand yes in uh, when the process of labor begins i can go for rescue surclage or emergency surclage worm surclage but the results are not that great right then if the dilatation of the cervix is more than equal to 3 centimeters, then in case of gross congenital anomalies, current pelvic infection, you are not going to go for cerclage. A relative contraindication for cerclage is placenta previa. Right. So this is what you needed to know on cerclage. Please remember, whenever you are doing cerclage, you have to give progesterone to your patient. Mm -hmm.